Hugh, I'm so excited to be here with you today. Uh, get to hear you tell your observations about not only Henry Lee Lucas, but we're going to be talking about Ted Bundy and about your involvement with the uh, coverage of the John Kennedy assassination. You were actually a witness to that, weren't you? Yeah. Wow. Well, I actually didn't see the president, but had I looked up at 2 o'clock, I could have seen Oswald in the window. So you were in there. the center of the street there. That was a hectic day. Tell us what you were doing back then. What, what brought you there? I was the uh, science and space editor for the Dallas Morning News, and I covered all the space flights all during that decade. And I didn't. I had an interview at SMU with some space scientist. Don't recall who. Certainly didn't show up. And I decided at the last minute almost that I was only four blocks from where he w would be passing, and that everybody you know, ought to go see the president. So I hightailed it over. The uh, crowds were vociferous. They were three and four. And six and seven deep, and so I had to keep going. And I saw a couple of lawyers that I knew, and I sort of followed them over to uh, the Elm Street, and that's where I stood, the center of Elm Street, and I looked up at the window. I could have seen him. I didn't, of course, because the Joanne, you could have seen Lee Harvey. Yeah. Lee Harvey Oswald. I was watching uh, the, the Kennedys had just passed me, but it was about four cars later, and I heard the shots. And uh, I wasn't sure the first one I thought was a car backfiring, but then there were two others, and I, I knew there were shots. And I saw this man pointing up to the window, he right across the street. So I ran to him. And he was the one that described Oswald. Saw him, he was sitting on a parapet there, and right across the street he saw him, and he uh, described him perfectly. And then when he found out I was with the Dallas News, he said, he, oh, get away, get away. I, he was scared for his family, he said. Later we became friends, but he was afraid for his family. Wow. So, two cops pushed me away from him. Well, that was lucky, too, because then I started interviewing other people. Nobody knew what had happened, really. They saw the damn car speed off, and nobody knew. But on the, on the motorcycle radio came the report from Oak Cliff a few minutes later. Officer been shot, I think it's bad, or something of that sort. So I said to myself, you know, if someone shoots at the president here, and we didn't know his condition, whether he'd been hit or not. But if someone shoots at the president, and then someone shoots a cop three or four miles away, there's a chance it could be connected. So I, my car was four blocks back to news. I didn't have a way to get to Oak Cliff. So I ran into two Channel 8 guys that had a mobile unit. And I said, did you hear what just came over the radio? And he said, no, no, what? And I said, cop killed over in, in three or four miles over in Oak Cliff. And he said, come on. And we, the three of us, went like wild to Oak Cliff. We got there in time to see the woman that had seen him up close, two sisters who had seen him. And by him, you mean Lee Harvey Oswald? Yeah. Yeah. And so that was that was an interesting afternoon. And we went, we searched through buildings, three or four of them, and finally, I remember going into an old furniture store. It wasn't a sales place; it was a storage facility for old furniture. And they thought they had a report that whoever it was was in there. So we go in there. I'm going in there. I'm up the steps. I look around and I, I know some of these cops, eight or nine, ten cops, and me. They all got guns and I don't. Oh my. Well, I was a little going into a little the place. hesitant. Yeah. yeah. Then we get inside the door and almost immediately, a guy, one of the cops that had been there earlier from the back, 
fell halfway through the floor. And everybody had their guns out. It's a wonder they didn't shoot him. And at that point I said, look, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> everybody here's got a gun, I don't have a gun, and I'm scared to death. So went outside and luck was with me again. I went up to an FBI guy I knew he was sitting in his car, his radio on, and he was getting a report that there was a suspect in the Texas Theater. Texas Theater. And so I thought, geez, that's, I hadn't eaten breakfast that morning. I was hungry. I drank a lot of coffee. I was, I was almost weak. I thought I gotta go, but it's eight or nine blocks. So I went eight or nine blocks. And I remember going in, going up to the woman selling tickets. Her name was Julia Postel. Postel. And I said, he's in there, he's in there. She said, and I said, did he buy a ticket? Stupidest thing I <laughs> ever asked. And she said, no, no, you don't understand. He's in there. So about that time, I ran into a, a guy who was manager of the shoe store. His name was Johnny Brewer. And Brewer was the reason that Oswald got cut. Because he was alone in his shoe store, four doors down from the theater. And he saw every time the police cars, they were, wow, they were going, you know, crazy. Every time one went by, Oswald would sort of hide in into the recesses in front of his store. So he ran up, and he's the one that told him he thought this was in, somebody involved. So I go inside the theater with Johnny Brewer. And, and there are no cops around yet? Oh, yeah, there were oh, cops. Oh, there were cops there? there. Were cops oh, here. good. Yeah, there were a lot of cops there. And I didn't see them all because most of them went in the back, came out on the stage. They had stopped, they had turned the lights semi on. And there were only about 13, 14 people in the theater at the time. And then I saw people coming off the stage. Two or three cops, guns drawn. And one of them stopped just before they got to where Oswald was. I was about 15 feet from Oswald when they jumped on him. Now this cop, Nick McDonald, was real smart. He stopped and talked to a couple, three or four seats in front of Oswald. Probably saved himself from getting shot. Anyway, he jumped on him. Immediately cops came from all directions. And it was just like one of these things you used to see in a comic book where an arm here and a leg there, <laughs> everybody shouting something. I only heard Oswald say, I was 15 feet away. Oswald said, I protest this police brutality. He said it twice. And it was brutal. They knocked him down. They stopped him from firing. Somebody got in a firing pin and his gun saved McDonald's life. Wow. And uh, they got him out of there. And I never understood why, but one of the cops was running in front of him with his hat off in front of Oswald's face so nobody could see his face. And I, I kept thinking, what in the world does that matter? <laughs>